As the Bible says, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So you are either going to reap everlasting regret and contempt and everlasting indignation and wrath of God upon your very soul, or you're going to reap everlasting life upon yourself by trusting in the only Savior men, the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand this, if you died right now apart from Christ, you'd wake up in hell forever. Do you see that? Though you mock God now, there's no mockery in hell, folks. Understand that. But there's no laughter in hell. There's no middle fingers in hell. There's no party in hell. It's weeping and gnashing of teeth forever. Weeping and gnashing of teeth forever and ever, where the fire is never quenched and the worm never dies. He says, unless you repent, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You see, folks, every mouth is stopped. All the world is guilty before God. You are guilty before God. And one day you will answer for everything you've ever done. You will answer for every deed you have done in the body which has been given you. If you don't have the righteousness and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ imputed to you by faith alone, God will justly throw you into an everlasting hell forever. <laughs> Whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. It says the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever. And the wrath of the Lord of hosts, the wrath of God that we poured out upon the impenitent sinner. And he says, I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they've sinned against the Lord. You see, your generation is just like Sodom and Gomorrah, prepared for judgment, prepared for everlasting indignation and fiery judgment which shall devour the adversaries of God. Your generation is a cursed generation, and it will be, it will be thrown into an everlasting hell. That is the reality. Get right with God. God is warning you. Get right with your maker. Get right with the one who holds your breath, he owns your ways, and one day you're going to stand before him. You're going to stand at the great white throne judgment, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. There's not going to be any laughter there. There's not going to be uh, any middle fingers there. Yeah, he forgives when he commands you to repent. That's how the forgiveness comes, that you repent and believe on him. That's when you receive forgiveness. You receive forgiveness when you repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you die in your sins, continue in this life of rebellion, the wrath of God abides upon you. If you die in this condition, you go to hell forever. Do you understand that? That the wages of your sin is death. The wages of your sin is death. That's why we're going to die. That it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this comes the judgment. Understand that. That you have two appointments, folks, that every one of us is going to attend. It's an appointment that cannot be canceled. It's an appointment that cannot be thwarted, and that is the appointment of death and judgment. You are going to die and stand before God and answer for everything you've ever done, just like a criminal stands before a judge in the courtroom. You will stand before your maker, your knee will bow, your tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And if your name is not registered and written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you will wake up in an everlasting hell, folks. It's the love of God to warn you to flee from the wrath to come. Even now the ax is laid at the root of the trees. Every tree that does not bear forth good fruit is hewn down and thrown into the fire. As it is written, the Lord Jesus Christ says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and men gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. That is your end. That if you do not abide in the vine of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you die in your sins, God will throw you into hell forever. A place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the fire is never quenched, and the worm never dies. Consider this, folks. Just like you are guaranteed to enter into this stadium today because you have a ticket, you're not going to be denied entry, but you will be denied entry at the gates of heaven if you do not have the Lord Jesus Christ as your ticket before the God of heaven, before his everlasting throne. If you die in your sins, you'll wake up in hell forever. Except a man be born again, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. As it is written, 
God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, but has committed unto us, his people, the message and word of reconciliation that you must be reconciled to your maker. You must be reconciled through the Lord Jesus Christ. As it is written, he says, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. He says, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Oh, folks, in the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare. But the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. That one day you're going to come to terms with your sin. And you're going to die and stand before your maker. And it's not going to matter what happened. It's not going to matter who won this football game 100 years from now. 100 years from now, every one of us is going to be dead. And the only thing that's going to matter is where you're right with God. Where you're right with your maker. That is the only question that's going to matter when you stand upon your deathbed. When you lay upon your deathbed, the only thing that's going to matter is where you're right with God. Where your sin's forgiven. Because if not, he'll throw you into hell forever. That's the reality. So that's the love of God to warn you. That's the love of God to warn you. To flee from the wrath to come. If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful, a most certain fearful and looking for a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries of God. He that despised Moses' law in the Old Testament died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much sore punishment shall it be unto those who die in their sins, who trample underfoot the Son of God, and count the blood of the everlasting covenant by which they are saved and washed and sanctified in an unclean thing? He's not real. It would be better for you to have never been born. Atheism is a temporary condition. Atheism is a temporary condition as you will one day die and stand before your maker. Consider that. That the very hairs of your head are numbered by your maker. Everything you've ever done has been recorded. And the all-seeing eye of God, on the day of judgment, your book of life will be shed abroad before all of humanity. And you will answer for everything you've ever done. Everything. We are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. We all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. That we are all as an unclean thing. That we are all as a filthy rag in the eyes of God apart from Christ. We have sinned against Him. We've stored up His wrath every day of our life if we're not in Christ. And He commands you to repent and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, God commands all men everywhere to repent. Because He has appointed a day when He will judge the world in righteousness through the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand that God is warning humanity, commanding them to repent because he has appointed a day, a most certain day. Yeah, praise God. It's a filthy generation, a filthy generation, a cursed generation, a generation who is wise in their own eyes, a wicked and perverse generation that will be destroyed forever in the eyes of God. You guys are a wicked generation. The mockery here today is unlike anything I've ever seen. Consider your ways. But if you died right now, you'd wake up in hell forever. That is your end. Your end is destruction. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame. You guys will be damned forever and ever if you die in this condition. That you must fervently take heed to this warning here. That you one day you're going to stand before God and answer for everything you've ever done. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. For he that sows to the Spirit of God shall of the Spirit of God reap life everlasting. And one day you're going to stand before him, whether you like it or not. You can deny his existence all you want. That doesn't negate the fact that you're going to die and stand before him. That your atheism is a temporary condition. That you're going to stand before your maker and answer for your mockery against him. For the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all that are ungodly among them, of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. That's your life of rebellion and anarchy against your maker. 
will be found in judgment on the day of evil. Yea, the Lord hath made all things for himself, even the wicked for the day of evil. That some of you were even made to destruction. What a fearful thing. Whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame. That your end is destruction. Your end is destruction. If you die in this condition, your end is everlasting destruction in hellfire. Where the fire is never quenched and the worm never dies. Understand this. Understand the urgency here today. That though you look good now, you feel good now, the fact of the matter is, if you died right now, you'd wake up in hell forever. No matter how good you feel right now, His wrath abides upon you if you're not in Christ today. He that believes on the Son is everlasting life. And he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. You see, where's the buffs going to be on Judgment Day? They're not going to save your wretched soul. They're not going to save you from the wrath to come. You're going to wish you repented and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ this very night when you stand before God. And the books will be open. And the book of your life is shed abroad before Him. And you're without excuse on the day of judgment. Because you heard the gospel here this very night. But you rejected your Maker. You rejected the only begotten Son of God to save you from this wretched condition. This wretched condition of sin. There's no other name under heaven, folks. No other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. You see, folks, understand this, that God is not mine. You reap what you sow. If you want to plant sin, you're going to reap corruption and damnation upon yourself. That every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. That you will answer for every thought, word, and deed on the day of judgment where you stand before your maker at the great white throne. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, who owns your breath, he owns your ways. That it is appointed unto you once to die and after this the judgment. The book of your life will be opened on that day. As it is written, he said, I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it. From whose face the presence of the earth and heaven fled away there was found no place for them and he says i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life the book was closed and the dead will be judged of those things which are written in the books according to their works that everything you've done has been written and this book of your life will be open before god on that day and if you don't have the lord jesus christ to save you from this wretched condition Oh, folks, God will drag you to an everlasting hell forever. Understand your ways. Understand the end of your sin. That God commands you to repent. He's not asking. He is commanding you. And if you refuse, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. He says, therefore will I number you to the sword, and you shall bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I did not delight. Oh, so, folks, that your end is destruction apart from Christ. That your end is eternal fire, eternal hell fire, forever and ever, where the fire is never quenched and the worm never dies. Consider your ways, that the wages of your sin is death, that you've sinned against God, you've stored up his wrath every day of your life if you're not in him, that you need your sin debt paid before Almighty God. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, but has committed unto his people the message and word of reconciliation, that it is about reconciliation to God. That as much as you study your books, study the word of God, and find what your end is. That if you die apart from the only Savior of men, you'll go to hell forever. That that is your end. That you must be born again. Reconciled to your maker as it is written, Except a man be born again, he cannot man. enter the kingdom of heaven. That you must be born again, that you were born dead in sin. That's why you must be born again, raised into newness of life in Christ. That we are born enemies of God by nature, children of wrath, children of disobedience. And that's why you must enter into the life of Christ, being born again, raised unto him. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
and no man comes unto the Father except through him. That God commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day when he will judge the world in righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, folks, there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who gave himself for our sins according to the will of God, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. As it is written, who gave himself for our sins, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and to purify unto himself Jesus. peculiar people, zealous of good works. But consider your ways. If you're not right with your maker right now, his wrath abides upon you this very moment. Turn and live. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. That you must turn from your evil ways and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Savior of men. There's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. The only one that can save your soul. He says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We turn everyone to his own way. You must be reconciled to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. He said, you see, your atheism is a temporary condition. You're going to stand before your maker, whether you like it or not. You're going to answer to your maker someday. Make sure you're right with God. Make sure you're right with your maker today. But the Lord Jesus Christ is coming again with power and great glory. He commands all men everywhere to repent and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lest they die in their sins and go to hell forever. He says, the Lord's hand is not short and that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but our iniquities have separated us from God. That sin has separated us from him. And that's why you must be reconciled to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And just like every one of you is guaranteed to enter into this stadium today because you have a ticket, you're not going to be denied entry. The question you must ask yourself is, do you have the ticket of the Lord Jesus Christ to be let into his everlasting kingdom on the day of judgment? Because if you don't have the ticket of the Lord Jesus Christ, God will deny you entry into his kingdom, and you'll wake up in hell forever. It'd be better for you to have never been born than to die in this condition. Turn and live. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm pleading. That's what I'm doing. That's what this is. It's pleading with souls to turn to Christ lest they die in their sins. That you must be born again. Reconciled to your maker to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He took the wrath of God, the penalty of our sin that every one of us deserves. He absorbed the wrath of God, pacifying and satisfying the wrath of God for the sins of his people. And he commands you to repent and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lest you die in your sins and go to hell forever. He says, the wicked shall be turned into hell in all the nations that forget God. Turn from your evil ways. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. 